Now let's look at several practice questions in chapter sixteen. So the first one, you can notice it gives you a table, right? And this is the balance sheet, or is what we just introduced before. And for this balance sheet, we can notice it has the liabilities showing here, right? And we have the deposit equal to eight thousand dollars. We also notice for the balance sheet, we have the assets, including two parts: reserves and loans. Reserve equal to one thousand, and then the loans equal seven thousand. Then the first question asks, what's the reserve ratio for this bank? So as we talk about before, the reserve ratio will equal reserve ratio always use R to represent. Okay, so reserve ratio always equal to reserves. Divide deposit times one hundred percent because this is a ratio, okay? And then we can use one thousand dollar divide eight thousand dollar and then times one hundred percent, which will give us the reserve ratio equal twelve point five percent. Okay, so according to this, option B is correct. Okay, and then let's look at the second question. It says, starting from the situation as this T account or balance sheet, if someone deposits five hundred dollars into this bank, and if the bank makes new loans, so as to keep its reserve ratio unchanged. Okay, so this is some keywords here. Okay. The bank makes new loans so as to keep the reserve ratio unchanged. Then the amount of the new loans that it can make will equal to which number? Okay. So based on this, we notice if someone deposit five hundred dollars into the bank, okay, then for their liability, for the liabilities, now the deposit. Will equal original. We have eight thousand, right? But now we have five thousand more, right? So now the deposit here will equal to thirteen hundred dollars. This is from liabilities. And what about the asset? What about the asset? Okay. So let's look at the asset. Assets will equal to reserves, right? Plus the loans, the reserve original it will equal one hundred dollars, right? But now we have the new deposit. Under the new deposit, we also need to have the new reserves, right? And then the new reserve here will just equal. So I just write it down here. The new reserves. Should equal five hundred dollars times our reserve ratio, twelve point five percent. Okay, and then bank can make the loans with the rest. Okay, so their sets also includes loans. Originally, the loans were equal seven thousand dollars, right? But now. The rest of the deposit, the bank will just make new loans. Okay, so which means it can plus five hundred dollars times the rest of the reserves. Okay, the reserve ratio is twelve point five percent, which means now the bank can make loans of eighty seven point five percent of the new deposit. Therefore. We can get the answer. Okay, so here we can notice the new loans, the new loans or additional loans. Here is the additional, the additional loans would just equal to five hundred times eighty-seven point five percent. Then this will give us the new loans will equal to four hundred three. Thirty-seven point five dollars. Okay, so this is the new additional loans that the bank can 
make if it want to keep the reserve ratio unchanged. Then let's move on to the last practice question. Okay, and in this practice question, it says if the money multiplier is three and the Federal Reserve buys fifty thousand dollars worth of the bonds, and what happens to the money supply? Okay, so in this question, we haven't introduced money multipliers, right? So money multiplier. Money multiplier. It will just equal to one over reserve ratio. Okay, so this is how we get the money multiplier. So now the multiplier equal three. Okay, and it says the Federal Reserve buys fifty thousand dollars worth of the bonds. When Federal Reserve purchase bonds, okay. So I would like to write it down. Federal Reserve. Purchase bonds. Which means, which means the Federal Reserve need to buy those bonds maybe from the financial institutions, right? So when Federal Reserve buys fifty thousand dollars of the bonds, it means Fed pays five thousand dollars. To the commercial banks or maybe to the other financial institutions. Okay, I just write down financial institutions. Okay, so if the bank pay, uh, sorry, if the Fed pays fifty thousand dollars in the financial institutions, such as commercial banks, it means now the bank. Similar, okay. The bank, the financial institutions have more fifty thousand dollars as liability. As liabilities, right? And if fifty thousand dollars increase in liabilities, what will happens to the money supply? We know those financial institutions can create money, right? Those financial institutions they can create money. Okay, we notice. Okay, those financial institutions. Those financial institutions can create money, and if now they have new liabilities, as fifty thousand dollars, then we can compute a new money supply in the market, right? Then it will result in a new money supply. This new money supply will equal. Fifty thousand dollars. This will be the new liabilities, right? Comes from Fed. Okay, so Fed purchase fifty thousand dollars bonds, which means now Fed inject or give financial institutions fifty thousand dollars. Divide reserve ratio. Okay, so from this one we can get the new money supply, and. From this part, we notice one over R. Okay, this is the money multiplier. Therefore, the new money supply will just equal fifty thousand dollars times three. Then, the new money supply will increase by one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay, so based on this, which one could be the right answer? New money supply will equal to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and this is increased money supply. Okay, therefore option B here is correct.